Hey everyone, this is Mr. Mayer, and this video will discuss corresponding parts of congruent triangles, CPCTC. By the end, you want to be able to say, I can use a two-column proof to prove parts congruent in two triangles. So we're just going to look at one proof. We need to use a two-column proof to prove the following. We're given that the two lines FS and NA are parallel, and that angle N is congruent to angle S. We're proving that segment FN is congruent to segment AS. Now, things to remember. This is the first time, the first proof that we are looking at in which we're not being asked to prove two triangles congruent. What's nice about this is the fact that nothing that we have done is going to change. You're still going to have to prove that one triangle is congruent to the other because once the two triangles are congruent to each other, then the parts are also congruent. Okay, so before we get started with the given information like we always do, I want to have you recall a great way to remember, a great way to prove two triangles congruent is to actually separate them out and take a look and decide, well, what kind of transformation are these triangles to each other? So are they a reflection? Are they a rotation? Translation? How is this working so that maybe I can help my brain visualize what's happening? So the first thing I'd like you to do is separate your two triangles out. Once you've separated your two triangles out, at this point, again, you're noticing that some of the letters are repeated. This FA is the same in both triangles. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to decide how can I make this triangle look exactly identical in the placement as the first triangle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and if I go ahead and rotate this, I'm going to notice that this is the exact same triangle as the left one. Okay, so this is important to remember. I always recommend you try to do this on your own just to help you visualize because now I can see in the end when I'm finished and I'm ready to prove the triangles congruent, I can see that angle N matches with angle S, angle F goes with A, and this A goes with this F. Okay, so that's important to understand. You can always use transformations to help you get started. Now, in our proof, we know we're always going to start with our given information we are always going to end with our proof statement. Again, as I said, to prove parts congruent, you have to prove the triangles congruent first. So our first statement, I'm just going to go ahead and plop in that first given, inf uh, given piece of information. We know that that was given to us. Now, this is saying lines are parallel. Always, always make sure you're labeling your diagram. So I'm saying that FS is parallel. Again, this is the arrow, not the dash. Parallels use those arrows. These are parallel to NA, so we know that those are going to be parallel. Now again, anytime I have parallel sides, I know that there are going to be some extra special angles being created, and I see that this line, FA, is going to be our transversal. So with the transversal, I always know I have angles congruent the angles that are in between, interior, and on different sides of my transversal that they are alternate. So that's my next step. I'm using step number one to help me with step number two. And I'm going to realize that angle NAF, this angle at the bottom, is going to be congruent to SFA. SFA. Now, you're, maybe you're wondering, how do you know the order in which you're going to name these? Let's put it this way. That's what's nice about using your trans, uh, transformation. I know that angle A down here, right here, is going to match with angle F up here, which is over here. So take a look. If I name this with N to A to F, I'm going to name it S to F to A. Okay, so that's what's nice about, again, using these transformations. This was a rotation this time to help us visualize. Now, how did we know that? What type of angles were these? These were alternate interior angles. I use the theorem to say that they were congruent. For step number three, I have another piece of given, given information. Let's go ahead and mark that in the diagram. Angle N is congruent to angle S. And I had already forgotten, I'll put two there. I forgot to put num step number two in. So I already know that A is congruent to F. All right, so now I'm putting N congruent to S. That's step number three. And again, that was just given information. Now I'm ready to start labeling. So let's put it this way. The whole purpose is to prove the two triangles congruent. I want to do that. The only way I can prove triangles congruent is by using 
postulates. So I want to know angle, angle, side, similarity, po uh, congruence postulate, or something like that. Anything that I have. So if I take a look, I have an angle so far. I have another pair of angles so far. And then the last one, is there anything that's shared exactly between the two triangles? I'm noticing both have side FA and um, AF right here. Those are going to match in between the two triangles. And again, I want to make sure I label them in the correct order. I'm putting them one forward, one backwards, because F goes with A and A goes with F right there. How did I know that? They're marked in between both triangles. They're used in between both triangles. It's the same letters, but they're backwards. Anytime I reverse the order, this is called the symmetric property of congruence. At this point, I have angle, angle, side similarity. So therefore, the triangles have to be congruent. That is one of my postulates that I have learned. Angle, angle, side, congruence, postulate. And you already have. You, it doesn't ask us the triangles here. So our job is to just go ahead and decide whatever order we want to put them in. I chose to uh, name it triangle fan. F-A-N is going to match with triangle A-F-S. And that's step number five. Since the triangles are congruent, I can use the fact that the whole triangle is congruent, so the parts have to be congruent too. So since the whole triangle is congruent, then my final step, my proof step is ready. Uh, segment FN is congruent to segment AS. The reason for that is because the corresponding parts of my congruent triangles must be congruent. And that's the title of our lesson, CPCTC. Okay? Make sure you understand what this stands for, corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Thank you guys for tuning in. Hope to see you soon.